So I can tell you what, if you've never done it, you're going to be sore. It's going to take time. It may cost you a little money if you're going to join a gym. If you want to get a trainer, it's even going to cost more money. But let's talk about the benefits. We always think about what's it going to cost. That's the first thing we always ask. Well, how much does it cost? How much does it cost? What does it cost? <laughs> well, talk about the benefits. You're going to get smaller. Your current clothes will get too big. You're going to get tons of compliments. You'll have more energy. You'll be healthier. You'll live longer. And everybody will be jealous of your discipline and the way you look. I mean, I'll be honest. Can I? Well, I'm honest anyway, so I don't need to get permission, you know. It makes me feel good when people say, you look great for your age. Well, but now listen. But I, didn't, I don't get it wishing. Remember? <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, when I started working out, I didn't, I guess I didn't, I mean, I guess I had the ability to have muscle, but I didn't have any that was showing. And <laughs> one day I was sitting and I rubbed the back of my leg and I felt this knot and I thought I had a tumor. I did. I thought, oh my gosh. I felt the other leg just, and I thought, oh, there's one there too. <laughs> and then I thought, I have muscle. I got on the phone, I said, I have a muscle. I was so excited. So anyway, I'm sure you've had enough of eating and exercise. Let's, how about some quotes on procrastination? You don't want to put it off, it's now. Here you go. Procrastination is like a credit card. It's a lot of fun until you get the bill. That was said by Christopher Parker. I want to give all these people credit because I got them off the internet. Ninyad McLaughlin, there are so many things we wish we had done yesterday and so few that we feel like doing today. <laughs> if you have goals and procrastination, you have nothing. <laughs> if you have goals and you take action, you'll have anything you want. Thomas Villiard. Procrastination is the kidnapper of souls and the recruiting officer for hell. Edward Irving. Procrastination is the seed of self-destruction, Matthew Burton. When there's a hill to climb, don't think that waiting will make it any smaller. <laughs> and here's my very favorite, and the author's unknown, so I don't know, maybe we could just start saying Joyce said. <laughs> Procrastination is suicide on the installment plan. <laughs> oh, you didn't like that. Well, I like it. couple of examples and I am gonna go a few minutes over my hour tonight but thankfully we don't fall off the clock now I had back pain for years and years and years wouldn't go to the doctor wouldn't go to the doctor wouldn't go to the doctor yeah I'll be all right yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be. one morning got up and couldn't walk so I had to go to the chiropractor two and three times a week for a year and three months what kind of warnings are you getting that you're ignoring? You say, what do you mean? Man, this shoulder of mine's been hurting for the last two years. I don't know what's wrong. Well, why don't you go find out? <laughs> well, I don't have a doctor. Well, get one. <laughs> Stop being passive and start being aggressive and taking care of things. I had a pain in my shoulder blade right here for 20 years, 20 years. And I could not tell you how many times I got my back adjusted for that pain in my shoulder because it was so bad. After two months of working out, that pain completely went away. I never had any problems with it after that. And now if I do something, which I did something recently and kind of irritated it, now I know what to do to get it to feel better on my own because I know the right exercises to do for it. You know what? You really save a lot of time when you do the right thing first instead of the wrong thing. Okay, I can see you didn't go too well with that. Let's try the dentist. 
A dentist once said this to me, and he had every right to say it. He said, we really need you to come in for your regular checkups and your regular cleaning so you stop needing emergency appointments <laughs> because you have a toothache. He reminded me that the only time he saw me was when I had an emergency. He then went on to tell me that my emergency put stress on his schedule <laughs> that was already full and that I was not being fair to him. And that was true. I wouldn't go get the checkups. I wouldn't go get the cleaning. But then when I'd get a toothache, I'd call and I have an emergency. I'm, I'm going out of town. Can you get me in right away? I've got a really bad toothache. And I probably did that six times over a period of, you know, number of years. And he was right in telling me what he told me. Can I tell you that Getting your teeth cleaned is less expensive and a lot less painful than a root canal. Okay, now, the one habit I told you that I would tell you about, and I'm gonna just lay a little foundation for you and then we'll be talking about we working this into the rest of our habits. The first habit that we need to form before anything else can work right in our life. <clears throat> and boy, this one good habit will help undo so many bad habits is what I'm going to lovingly and reverently call the God habit. <laughs> I believe that spending time with God and being in the Word can definitely become a habit. I would absolutely feel totally and completely undone if I didn't get up now and spend the first part of my day with God. Now. I know you say, I, you know, I'm just not a morning person. Well, even if you're not a morning person, could you take five minutes just to get, just to let the devil know where you stand today? And if you can't do anything, just say, God, I love you. I need you. I appreciate everything that you do for me. I need your help today. Help me. So then maybe you're going to spend more time with God at lunch or you're better at night or whatever. But try to get your day started with God on your mind. Form the God habit. Now listen, Luke 22, 39. And he went, and, and he came out and went, as was his habit, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples also followed him. Now Jesus did not go to the mountain because he was partial to mountain climbing. He went there to pray. Jesus went there when he needed to spend time with his Father. And Jesus had a habit of spending time with his heavenly Father. If it was a habit for him, who seemed to have all power and could do all things, then why would it not need to be a habit for us? And you see, because it was a habit for him, when it came time for his death and crucifixion, he knew right away where to go and what to do. He went to the garden and he got down and he prayed and his mind was in such great agony that as he continued to press in in prayer, the Bible says that he sweated great drops of blood. But he fought through, your will be done, God, and not mine. And then angels came and ministered to him. And because he prayed through and knew where to go habitually when he was in trouble, we are all here today, saved, born again, and on our way to heaven. And let me tell you something. If you will farm the God habit, and you will spend time with God, and you'll learn the Word, and you'll begin to be led by the Holy Spirit, you have no idea how many people you will be able to positively affect over the rest of your lifetime, and how many people may be in heaven because you were wise enough to form good habits. Now, how many of you know if you form this God habit, it's going to break automatically, it's going to drive a lot of other bad habits out of your life? That's why I really don't intend, I'm not gonna deal with every bad habit that I can think of. There's a couple that I'm gonna mention, but by and large, we are gonna talk about making good habits. I think if we stay on the good stuff, the bad stuff just won't have any room in our life. And I'm telling you again, Enoch, the Bible says, Enoch walked habitually with God, and he was not, for God took him. 
Here's a man who had such good habits that the world couldn't even hold him anymore. It didn't even have a place for him because he walked habitually with God. Every great man and woman that you read about in the Bible, all of our heroes of faith, they had the God habit. David sought God with his whole heart. I will seek you, God, with my whole heart. Early in the morning will I seek you. I meditate on your word all throughout the night. I'll just simply tell you, if you won't spend time with God, you say, well, I go to church. That is not what I'm talking about. That is not what I'm talking about. What you hear in church, what you hear on CDs, what you read in books, they're pieces. And you need them. But you got to take them all to God and ask Him to put them together in your life and make them work for you. Amen. I'm encouraging you to focus on the good thing that you want to do and stop big S-T-O-P focusing on the bad thing you don't want to do. The Bible says in Romans 12, 21, don't let yourself be overcome by evil, but overcome and master evil with good. So that means that we can overcome bad habits by focusing on making good habits. Brand new book, Making Good Habits, Breaking Bad Habits. I believe you're really going to be encouraged like never before that you don't have to fight with your bad habits, but you can simply overcome them by making good habits, and God wants to help you do that. So be sure you get my book, and also there's lots of people you could buy this for, and they're going to really appreciate it. God bless you. Have a great day. Once I started taking care of what I had, I started to break my spending habit. As a family, we made the God habit. It's like living in a different house. This has affected every area of my life. Did you know that focusing on developing good habits will help you break the bad ones? Today, we're offering Making Good Habits, Breaking Bad Habits for your donation of any amount. Call us right now toll free, 1-800-727-9673. Well, I'm issuing a special invitation to you to attend one of my conferences this year. And some of you might say, well, Joyce, I'm just too busy. Well, you know, that's usually our first response to a lot of things. But really, when we make a commitment to come, I believe that God is really going to make a tremendous impact on your life. You know, it's very important for us to slow down and set aside time for God. So why don't you make plans to join us? We really would love to see you there. Don't miss your chance to see Joyce live. Inspiring worship, life-changing teaching. The Joyce Meyer Conference is coming to Hershey, Pennsylvania, August 7th through 9th with worship by Fused Worship and Toronto, Ontario, August 21st through 23rd with worship by Israel Houghton. All sessions are free. For more information and a complete conference schedule, visit us at JoyceMeyer.org or call toll-free 1-866-C-JOYCE. No matter who you are, what you did, or what's happened before, God has your comeback already planned and it's going to be glorious. We've all had times in our lives when things just don't seem to go as we had planned. I want you to know that it's never too late for your fresh start. You can begin again, and I want to show you how. You can begin again. Available now from Joyce Meyer Ministries. Thank you, friends and partners. Together, we're sharing the love of Christ around the world. To find out more, please contact us or visit us online at JoyceMeyer.org. Join us in partnership as we share the love of Christ around the globe. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.